Pheasant Productions presents the math of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Now, um, as I said, I've been kind of picking on this whole illusion of thinking for yourself. Um, you know, like I said, the, the light bulb here, because you're looking at a video, is two dimensional. Now, if you're thinking for yourself, obviously you say, hey, I saw one of those before in the hardware store, and then, you know, whatever, I own one, whatever. I know, I know it's a, a three-dimensional object, but if you're really a thinking person, you understand what I'm saying about this, this is a two-dimensional object in front of you because you're watching a video. The video is nothing more than light on a screen of some sort, whether it's a movie screen from ancient days, or it's a computer screen, or a TV screen, or a multimedia screen, however you want to put it, type of a thing. But you stop and you realize what I'm actually saying about how it is only a two-dimensional object. Um, I picked on the Flat Earth people quite a bit, and a couple of them yammered about how they had all kinds of science to back themselves up. And of course, what did they do? They showed video that they don't know who actually sent the balloon up, but they, they, they oh, we sent a balloon up and, and see the world's flat. You're looking at a two-dimensional object. You cannot prove that it is a three-dimensional image below you because even the mountains that are sticking straight up are, of course, flat electrons on a computer screen. <laughs> They're photons. There's, 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 there's so little depth there, folks. It's, yeah, it, it's a two-dimensional object. You cannot prove a three-dimensional world with a two-dimensional image, regardless of whether it's a sphere or it's a flat Earth. Um, one guy ranted and raved about how he had all kinds of facts. So I asked him some basic things, like how do you explain explain the Corrales effect? How do you explain uh, star trails? How do you explain somebody like me going out and photographing stuff? And they, oh, oh, oh you, you, you don't really see that stuff. It, it, it isn't really there. You're telling a guy that's been photographing the night sky for 44 years that it's all an illusion. It's, it's, it's never real. I've never actually seen a satellite go over my head. Even though I've taken dozens upon dozens of pictures and <laughs> had to stop and go, wait a minute, let me see, count the frames, that, nope, nope, that's on this frame, that frame, and that frame, and that frame, or this frame, and that frame, so therefore it's a satellite, it's not a shooting star. I got 25 shooting stars, verifiable shooting stars, in 2015. How does a flat earth produce a shooting star? It can't. It's in, According to one guy, the, the, the entire world is inside of a, a container of some sort. Uh, there is nothing that exists outside of that container. There are no gods but the god he believes in. Um, you know, everything, everything is a fallacy except his own beliefs. Okay? Obviously, he's not really thinking. He is repeating something somebody told him to say. How, how, can, how can this coffee cup, which contains, you know, a liquid inside, I mean, yeah, again, it's a two-dimensional object, yeah, I understand, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's got fluid inside of it. How does that fluid know that there's nothing out here? It doesn't. It's inside. Yeah, okay. So that's how illogical a person's thought patterns are. Um, the, like, like I say, the, the, the religious text that you pick up, it doesn't, this is just the Bible, it happens to be handy at the moment. Um, it doesn't matter whose religious text it is, what do they all say? Don't challenge us, accept us on faith. Why? Because they cannot answer anything. Heaven. Like I said, the only way you get to heaven, whether it's this heaven or a Muslim heaven or a Jewish heaven or a Hindu heaven or a Sintu or a Native American heaven or anything like that, the only way you get there is you die. Yeah, so how do you come back and prove that it exists? You don't. Okay, that's simple. Um, the amount of people that are still, still ranting and raving 
about how Donald Trump is the savior. He's going to save us all from corruption. They aren't paying attention to the fact that while Obama, and I am in no way supporting any of the past presidents, okay, um, Jimmy Carter is probably the only one that came anywhere close to being honest, and even he is full on in there. Uh, Bernie Sanders, okay, in the, the 70s, 60s and 70s, he was an activist. Then he became a politician. He joined the system, folks. He was what the CIA and FBI call a sleeper. When they needed him to step up and act like an activist, he did. But he also warned her, don't, don't, don't go out there and do anything in public. Do it all behind closed doors so that nobody knows you're, you're, you're against the system. Um, Donald Trump, okay, like, like as I say, you know, he is, he is every bit as corrupt as anything you can possibly believe in. 1990, I started studying Donald Trump, not because I like him, but because this guy was ranting and raving about how great a businessman he was, and every time I looked at anything, it was always a Donald Trump business failure of this, or Donald Trump pushing that, but it never really gets going anywhere, and the only place that he really makes anything happen is when he is selling to other rich people. Um, Obama was a lawyer for Goldman Sachs. About 48 hours after he took office in 2009, he signed a, a bill that had a writer in it that gave total immunity to the Wall Street banks for causing any kind of financial crisis. So he wasn't any kind of a good guy. He wasn't any savior for the American people. He wasn't going to bring any kind of change. Um, Donald Trump ranted and raved about what a horrible person Obama was because he was a Goldman Sachs employee. Donald Trump, about 72 hours after he won the election, hired, I think he had four Goldman Sachs employees immediately ensconced into his cabinet. He, at the time Christmas rolled around, I mean, we're talking like, you know, a little over 30 days later, he had seven Goldman Sachs employees directly on his cabinet bankroll. He has put Goldman Sachs in charge of the SEC. He has the big oil in charge of the environment. You know, the absolute worst per person you would want to have in charge of the environment is somebody that rapes and pillages the environment. Uh, Donald Trump is selling off national parks right and left. Um, you know, he, he's giving all kinds of freedoms and rights. He is doing all kinds of illegal stuff. Uh, the Native Americans in No Dapple. Within 48 hours, he signed a presidential executive declaration that even military could go in there and shoot the fuck out of these Native Americans because they're in the way of a Donald Trump investment. Yeah. The, uh, what is it, uh, Energy Trans Trans-Pacific Energy, something like that. I forget the exact words of it, but the company that is building the Dapple North Dakota Pipeline is a Donald Trump investment. So he actually used his presidential powers to facilitate his financial investment being put together. That is a federal felony to do that. Okay, So Donald Trump is in no way, shape, or form any kind of good guy. He is doing everything possible to create an absolute fascist country in the front, in the front, not 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 hidden and underground like everybody prior for the previous you know about forty five years has done, but rather you know he is a hundred percent bald faced to your face people doing this, and like I said, people are out there ranting and raving about how Donald Trump is still the savior of the world. They don't even look at they don't even look at news. They don't even look at anything. They just, oh, 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 God, i got to believe. Okay? They're like the people that pick up the Bible here. And they don't ever read this, so they don't ever read that Jesus Christ did not ask to be killed on the cross. 
it is a fallacy that God gave his only son because everything that lives on this planet is a creation of, of a God. Regardless of how many gods you believe in, okay, it's all here because of a God. Therefore, I am a son of God. You're a son of God, whoever you are, or you are a daughter if you're a female. You know, if you're a transsexual, you're a little of both, okay? But the reality is very simple. You are all God created, so you didn't get given up to be sacrificed, and Jesus Christ wasn't given up to be sacrificed. It is a fallacy. Okay? And your Bible literally says that. But you don't believe that. You wave your crosses and say, oh, this is so great. I love my cross. I, I cross myself every day. And you worship murder weapons. You talk about how you love peace and freedom and your country blows the snot out of other countries. 9-11, the big deadly thingy, the big bad terrorist action was committed by Saudi Arabians. Saudi Arabia gets, you know, a hundred million dollars a year in weapons from the United States to go blow the snot out of other countries like uh, Sudan and Yemen that aren't doing anything to Americans, that didn't hurt any American, but they happen to be in the middle of the way of, of an oil pipeline, or they happen to be sitting on land that has oil underground. So you people don't think. You don't logic it. You don't stop and think about the fact that if, if Monsanto is putting poison into the genetics of the food you're eating, then you are eating poison. You don't think about the fact that if in 1920s and 1930s sodium fluoride was a poison on everyday markets and, and, and all, that for you to make certain that you're a good little person and, and do what your government wants you to do and you fluoride yourself with toothpaste with fluoride and mouthwash with fluoride and, and all of that, it, you're not really thinking very, very far at all you are doing what is called re repeating. What do schools do? They have you come in and you learn how to repeat what you are told to repeat. You do not spend any time learning how to sit down with a stack of ideas and process it into an original thought. You are taught to be a team player. You are taught to be part of whatever the system is. You are taught to be controlled. And you get it at every level for every reason. And you do it for every level and every reason. It's so much more important to be part of the in crowd. To have the iPhone, to watch TV. To, you know, they, I mean, there are people that actually brag about how they, they, they watch absolutely every single show of a certain, or every single, yeah, Every single episode, I guess that would be the proper word, every single episode of a particular thing. And then they go back and they watch it again and again and again because it's just so great. I don't know of a single TV program I have ever wanted to watch every single episode of. I don't know of anything I have ever followed that hard. I don't know of any writer of any science fiction books that I have read everything they've written or even wanted to. I like variation. I like different ideas. I like to take different points of view. Even my own artwork, if you look at what I did in the 1970s in comparison to what I do now, it's, it's considerably different. There are flavors of what I did, yes. You will see Monet and Rembrandt. You will see Picasso. You will see Degas. You will see Pollock. You will see all these different variations of stuff that I have touched and, and watched over the years. Even my photography adjusts and varies depending on what I am and where I am and what I do. I don't do the same thing all the time. I think. <laughs>